Howdy, howdy, this is Ethan Bonreal back at it again, playing more Mother 3, and last time we were here, we kicked off Chapter 2, we're now playing as Duster, the skilled thief, who is apparently being sent on an important thief-type mission by his dad, Wes. Um, unfortunately for us, and probably Duster too, we don't really have a lot of context for that, so um, we're gonna go somewhere to steal something that apparently is important, but we don't really know what it is. He just told us we'd know it when we see it, so we're gonna roll with it, and... In the meantime, I probably will update y'all a little bit on what is going on with me, but first, let's go ahead and say hi to this guy. Oh, he doesn't have anything to say, he's just adjusting his hat. Alright, well, he's he's just here. So something I'd like to point out that we never really went over in um, the first video for Chapter 2 is that it seems like, um, with Wes putting us on this mission, another example of the older people in the village kind of knowing that there's something weird going on. Um, if you don't personally remember, we... oh, hey, it's a bat. Um, both as a player and as Duster really don't know what the hell is going on, like I said in the intro of the video. Um, and it seems like Wes very specifically trained us to deal with a certain situation, and this coincides with um, all of this weird stuff happening in our village, so it's just something to keep in mind for the future. We need to figure out what's going on here. Um, the internal logic and consistency in this game is pretty tight. I won't act like you don't have to suspend your belief. Um, but the reality is, is that, um... I'll take one. Thank you. Very polite of you. Um, the reality of things is, is that the game pretty much tells you what's going on. It's just you don't always appreciate it until you, um, play enough through the game. So what I'm doing here is, again, doing a little bit of exploring and comboing the shit out of that bat. It didn't die, though. Kind of sad about that. Um, partly because I need to level up Duster a bit. He is kind of i wouldn't say he's weak but he's fighting solo here while flint had his dog with him and then eventually um duster and so we kind of need to get him beefed up a bit there are ants at your feet okay so the game is not letting us go this way but that is always something that i want to check in rpgs like this if you are allowed to backtrack or not and we are not and now you know um, you cannot revisit the areas that Flint visited as Duster. You are on a mission. The game railroads you into making sure you do what your dad told you to do, and that is go steal some shit from a castle. But you can at least go to the very beginning of the forest. So now we're going to go ahead and get back to our mission. As far as what's going on with me... Um, Honestly, I've been thinking about this game a bit, um, so something I really enjoy- You can't see it, but I'm spooked out. I'm shivering a little bit. <laughs> if, you, if you don't remember, um, I have a legitimate phobia of zombies. I <laughs> do not like them. They scare me pretty bad. I don't watch zombie media willingly. spooky um but i will discuss this real quick so i mentioned that even though there are times where you do have suspension of disbelief uh, most of the things in this game are pretty internally consistent so right now we are faced with a real live zombie oh uh, didn't I didn't I die? More. More. I want to live more. 
I don't have a good zombie voice, I'm sorry. Ooh. Oh, oh my. Is that you, Duster? How my, have you g g grown? Why, there's so much of you that I could eat for three days and three nights and still have leftovers. Oh, she's calling me kind of thickums. She wants to gnaw on my, my love handles a little bit. That's actually... Oh, never mind. Let me not say that. Um... <laughs> Um, so yeah, they're, they're zombies. People can rise from the dead in this game. That is a canical thing they can do, apparently. Um, and I'm just gonna roll with it. It does confirm some things, though. Um, that there are people who are deceased who live on this island. And apparently a good number of them. I promise you I'm not being... <laughs> I'm not being quiet because I'm afraid. Um... This is just kind of like a very surreal moment of the game. <laughs> like I kind of forgot there were um there were like just straight up zombies in this game, but it it I think that's something I'll come back to and talk about later because um you need to know a little bit more about what is going on to really discuss why the fuck there are zombies in this game. So we're, we're just gonna put a, a pin in that for a little bit. Oh hey, it's Nippolite. Oh, it's Old Man Wiss's son. What's his name? <laughs> you sure do like to walk around at night, do ya? Okay. Well, I was told you were going to help me figure out what to do, and it looks like you are not doing that. So, what do I need to do here? I'm looking at graves, right? Is this like Ocarina of Time? Do I push a grave to the side? It says this looks wobbly. Okay, I can't move you. What is this? No problem here. I've got a hand card. It's a wheelbarrow, actually. True connoisseurs know that this is the ultimate shovel of the highest quality. Okay, I will accept that. I'm not going to challenge you on that. Okay, I believe you. It's a sketch of the area. So, normally a drawbridge would live here. However, that is not accessible to me. And they actually mentioned that earlier, that the uh, drawbridge uh, was actually up. <coughs> Auntie, 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 Aunt, Aunt. From nowhere in particular, you hear a voice, and that voice is mine. Watch where you're stepping, will ya? I'm like standing right here. I'm an ant. Don't you dare step on me. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. I've been watching you for a while now, and I just can't take it anymore. Fights are all about rhythm. You know, like boom, boom, ba boom, 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 and stuff. When you're in battle, there's a very specific rhythm that matches the enemy's beat. Pick up on that rhythm and victory will be yours. If you're really good, you can even pull off a 16-hit combo. I hereby name these Sound Battles. Thanch you very manch. Okay. <laughs> I will accept that. Ooh. So once you... Ah, oh, shit, I shouldn't have fought one of these. Once you, um... We're gonna run away. Thank God. <laughs> Once you do that, um, more enemies in the graveyard area become active. Both the zombie people and a zombie dog, because dogs also get to be buried. Um, and much like the previous part, like I mentioned, it is very important um, 
to level grind <laughs> while you are starting this off because um, there there is a little tech stuff you can do to make this easier um, and there are things you can do to cheese fights and abuse enemies weaknesses but you need to have like an absolute like certain amount of stats for the most part to not get like flattened by some enemies um, because you're going to actually start encountering enemies that actually have defense points, meaning you are not going to hit them very hard, and it's going to be very miserable for you if you choose not to get at least, like, I would say maybe two or three levels starting out for Duster before you really, like, plunge deep into the next area. So we're going to talk to this frog real quick. Get over here. And we also are going to look through our inventory real quick. Let's see, can we equip anything? I think we picked up something, right? No. 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 Okay, okay. Good to know. What did we get? Oh, we got food. We do need to actually eat some food, though, because Duster is pretty hungry. There we go. You got your HP back. Um, luckily, this part of the game is pretty generous to you in terms of giving you healing items pretty regularly. Um, but I guess I'll get back to talking about the stuff I was trying to talk about earlier. Um, I've been thinking about this game a good bit more, um, now that I've been Let's Playing it. And, um, something I kind of like about Chapter 1 and 2 is I'm a big fan of games that, like, let you experience the game from different perspectives, and I love parallel stories, um... So, this isn't the only game that does it, but in Kingdom Hearts, um, they have this, I think it's a song, and it's also an animated cutscene that was like an unlockable for beating Final Mix of the first Kingdom Hearts game called Another Side, Another Story, and I learned that on TV Tropes, um, which is a terrible website, but I, it one that catches my attention, honestly. Um, they basically have named, like, this type of situation on another side, another story, where you play through one scenario, and then you go back and play through it from another perspective, um, to kind of get the full story, and so, while in Chapter 1, Flint was hyper-fixated on, you know, his wife and child, which is reasonable, um, Duster and Wes are kind of investigating what is actually going on to even cause that situation to happen. The end of chapter one summarized it pretty well. Tasmili Village, the place where we live, has never really experienced tragedy like this, and a bunch of weird bad shit is just starting to happen out of nowhere that is coinciding with those people with pig masks showing up. Um, so... We are kind of getting a more, I guess, blown up picture of what's going on. We're zoomed out a little bit. Actually, blown up is not quite the right word. Uh, a zoomed out picture um, separated from the emergency of dealing with um, Hanawa's death. And that's neat. In fact, actually kind of related, um, this is another game, but that's actually one of my th favorite things in Skyward Sword. Uh, I don't super like Skyward Sword as a Zelda game, but at the end of Skyward Sword, they do this thing where... Um, spoilers, by the way. <laughs> if you haven't played Skyward Sword and you fucking care about that, you should just... Uh, well, we're at 14 minutes. You should just skip to the next video, because I'm not going to do anything important in this part, honestly. Um... They basically, after you rescue Zelda, they show you in the credits what she was doing the entire game, and that she was going on her own adventure, um, and traveling around with Impa, and I thought that was so cool, and I was like, oh man, it would be really great if there was a new game plus that, um, like, let you go on Zelda's adventure, um, and just see what she was seeing and what she was interacting with, and Ocarina of Time could have done, like, a really good thing with that too, where... Um, you could see what Zelda was doing during the seven years that Link was asleep, but they did not do that, unfortunately. And I do remember someone, I think I saw in an interview, someone at Nintendo, like, pitched, like, a game based off of Sheik in the Ocarina of Time, 
um, time period, someone pitched to Miyamoto like doing like a game about Sheik, and he was kind of interested, but they just never did that. And I don't think we didn't get it because of Majora's Mask, but Majora's Mask was something they decided to pursue instead. Anyway, after this fight, we are going to wrap up this part. I have a lot of notes that I have not really engaged with. <laughs> I've just kind of been running around and doing random shit. I'm glad y'all can't see my facial expressions, because I'm, I'm kind of, like, blushing a little bit, because I definitely... Like, I went into this with a plan, and I'm just kind of saying random shit at this point, and also definitely not even trying to combo, but... I honestly... So this part of the game is low-key a little hard <laughs> um even with combos duster doesn't do quite enough damage if you're not doing like a really big combo to one shot things um like i when i was doing my practice file i was actually like two shotting the enemies despite doing like five and six hit combos and it was triggering me because i was like okay why am i spending all this effort doing combos when i'm still like two shotting things anyway um, and so, again, that's why I say you just kind of need the, the raw stats to, like, be able to get through this chapter, because you get beaten up pretty bad here. But, um, before I get ahead of myself, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. We made it through the graveyard. There's Nepalite here. We'll talk to him in the next part. He's hoeing around, like I probably should be instead of recording this. But um, I'll catch y'all later, taters. Have a good night.